Welcome to this trigonometry video which uh, has a look at trigonometry as it relates to obtuse angles. We're used to using trigonometry ratios for acute angles between 0 degrees and 90 degrees and they are all positive. We haven't had a th think about uh, trigonometry ratios that have been negative before now. So acute angles, uh, sine is positive, cos is positive and tan is positive. Now because uh, obtuse angles are in a different section of the number plane, some interesting things happen when you've got obtuse angles. Sine stays positive, but we consider cos to be negative and any tan ratio to be negative as well. Let's see what that means for some results as we work through this video. We also have to remind mind ourselves that uh, acute angles, uh, they have sort of uh, angles that are the same size as them in the obtuse section. So every acute angle has what we call a related obtuse angle, like an equivalent obtuse angle. And every obtuse angle has a related or, or equivalent acute angle. And we find that pretty easily by taking away any angle uh, from 180 degrees, we find its related angle that way. As a couple of examples, and if we have an acute angle of 70 degrees, we can find the equivalent obtuse angle to that size angle um, by taking it away from 180 degrees. So we would say that 70 degrees is very closely related to 110 degrees. So 70 degrees, let me just circle those two. 70 degrees is really closely related to 110 degrees. I could show you on a diagram, but I uh, haven't really got the time, sorry. <laughs> Ask your local math teacher. An obtuse angle of 140 degrees, we can find its related or its equivalent acute angle by taking it away from 180 degrees. So we get 40 degrees there. So an obtuse angle of 140 degrees has a related acute angle of 40 degrees. So any time we've got a, any angle really uh, that's acute or obtuse, we can find the equivalent uh, opposite style angle by taking it away from 180. Okay, so we combine that sort of rule or that sort of method, taking away an angle from 180 to find its related angle, and we kind of combine that with the obtuse angle results that I just described, sine being positive, but we consider cos and tan to be negative for obtuse angles. We mix those two sort of rules or results together and we get three very interesting results. We get these three results here. Now the left hand sides of each, they have 180 minus A, so that's like the obtuse section. So an obtuse sine angle has a direct relationship to an acute sine angle. But an obtuse cos angle or an obtuse tan angle has not so direct a result. It's kind of pretty direct but there's a minus involved in each of them. So we'll see how that pans out in some questions we'll get. Like most uh, situations if we show, see a good example we might be able to figure things out. So here's three uh, questions we're going to have a look at quickly. If theta is an acute angle we've got to find theta if sine 100 degrees equals sine theta. That looks a bit weird, but uh, let's see what happens here. We'll compare it to that sine result that we just got through uh, being introduced to here, and we'll put it down here. Now, I want you to, to focus on this bit here. Sine 100 is in the same spot as a sine 180 minus A. So if we can figure out the value of that A there, we'll be able to figure out the value of theta because those two are in the same spot on the right hand side. It's kind of like a matching game here. It's not got a lot to do, the, the finding the answer to these questions hasn't got a lot to do with trigonometry really. For many students it's just a matter of figuring out what the missing bit must be. So what do you think A must be if you can take it away from 180 and get a result of 100? Now I think you can see that A has got to be 80 degrees and that ends up being our answer for theta. Now I could tell you all the steps involved but that's how, how simple it is to find our answer here. If we figure out the value of A from the left hand side that'll be the, uh, the same value on the right hand side for wherever you see an A as well. So you can see that uh, A must be 80. So um, A is in the theta position on the right hand side there so theta must in the end be 80. So we got 80 for our answer here, and that was the same value as the missing bit up here when we compared 100 and 180 minus A. 
Sounds complicated, but uh, we don't have to actually think about it that much. We're just matching up some uh, results on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Let's have another look at it. Let's uh, have another example here. This one using the cos result here. Now we'll have to factor in that minus, but but our uh, the question has a minus in it as well, so we won't really have to think about that much differently. We're going to be using that cos result. I've just brought it down here to show you. Let's have a look at this section here. 180 minus something equals 110. Now it's really, uh, the answer is just the difference between 180 and 110. I think you'll see that that would have to be 70 in there. Let's see how that pans out. Yep, it'd have to be 70 there to match it up with 110. And that ends up meaning that theta will equal that angle. This and this are equal to each other. So we can go pretty much straight to our answer down there and say that theta will equal 70 degrees. Now there's, a, you know, there's three lines of working there, but in the end, once you find that A bit there, the missing A bit, when you relate these two bits together, that ends up being our answer. Let's see if it pans out for the tan example over here. We have tan 120 equals minus tan theta. Let's compare it to the tan result from above that we're using for obtuse angles. Let's have a look at this bit again that I'm encouraging you to have a look at here. Have a look at the difference between 180 and 20 here. Sorry, 180 and 120. And that gets you your answer straight away. Let's pan down to the bottom. Theta equals 60. So the shortcut here in each of these questions is to take 180 and subtract that 120 and you'll get straight to your answer. So I'm not saying don't use the rule, but there's a bit of a pattern here that we can uh, go straight to for our answer if we're sure that our, uh, our question matches up with the, uh, the correct result above it. Okay, I hope that helps. It's a bit complicated, but um, if you look at the right spot there, you should be straight to your answer. Okay, every now and again they want us to find an obtuse angle solution. Our answer needs to be in the form of an obtuse angle. Often it involves an acute angle as well. Step one will be to find the acute angle and we can find the equivalent obtuse angle by taking it away from 180. Let's remember that off to the side there. Let's see an example. Sine theta equals 0.62. Now I think you'll find from uh, your previous trig work that uh, when you're finding, you'll remember that when you're finding a theta or an angle, you have to press shift sine cos or tan. So we'll press shift sine 0.62 into the calculator, then press equals. That'll give us an acute theta, a normal answer of 38 point something degrees. Now that's step one, we've found an acute angle. But the answer, the question wanted us to find an obtuse angle, so let's take away that from 180 degrees and we'll find the obtuse equivalent of that, 140 degrees. Now sometimes they might want us to round it off. At this point here, we might like to, if they want us to round it off in degrees, minutes and seconds, might like to uh, press that extra degrees button to transfer that into degrees, minutes and seconds, but it depends on how they want us to round that off. Okay, so they asked for an obtuse angle here. What did we do? We kind of ignored them at first <laughs> and found an acute angle first, and then we took that acute angle away from 180 to find an obtuse angle. Let's check out another version. Tan theta equals 5 over 8. Now in a normal way from previous trigonometry, we press shift tan 5 over 8 equals, and that'll give us a normal acute angle for our answer, just over 32 degrees. So that's step one, we've found an acute angle just by pressing shift tan in this case. And then to find the obtuse equivalent, once again we'll take that away from 180 degrees. And we get that on our calculator and we might round it off. So once again here, around this point here, we might do need to press the degrees, minutes and seconds button. But round it off, that's very close to 148 degrees anyway. So, step one, find the acute angle. And how do we go from an acute angle to an obtuse angle if we're asked to? Take our acute angle away from 180 to find the equivalent obtuse angle. 
Now, a quirky thing happens with sine ratios because you notice uh, earlier in the video that we said that sine was positive in the acute section, which all of the sine, all of the ratios are positive in that section, but sine was the only one of the three ratios that was positive for obtuse angles as well. So in some questions, we actually get two possible answers, especially sine questions here. Here's a, an interesting question. Find the possible values of theta between 0 and 180 degrees. So that takes into account acute angles and obtuse angles, so we'll have to keep that in mind. If sine theta, and they've given us the result here, sine theta equals 0.4619. We'd find an angle by pressing, can you remember, shift sine, and uh, typing that 0.4619 in and pressing equals. We get a normal answer there of... 27.5 degrees, roughly. But we'll have to remember that this question is asking us for not just an acute answer, but an obtuse ang ang answer is also possible as well, because that positive result for sine can apply to acute angles and obtuse angles. This really only crops up for sine ratios, because sine's the only one that's positive for acute and obtuse angles. Okay, so we found 27 degrees uh, roughly there. Now how do we, from earlier in this video, do you remember how we go from acute angles to the equivalent obtuse angles? We take our acute angle away from 180 degrees. And we get a final answer of 152 degrees, 29 minutes, 24.8 seconds. So to go from this point to this point down here, or from, yeah, pretty much, we'd have to press the degrees, minutes, and seconds button again. So anytime you've got a decimal degrees, just press that degrees button, and it'll get you that degrees, minutes, and seconds version. But we have two solutions here, and that was certainly uh, hinted at by our heading, two possible answers, and find the possible values. Notice that's a plural there. So we find the normal acute version, and we can have an obtuse solution because it's sine, and uh, the question wants us to do it for both the acute angles from 0 to 90 and from 90 to 180 to include the obtuse solution as well. So that's quite a quirky one. You don't see that very often, but anytime you're asked for possible values, that hints that there might be more than one. So we've covered quite a lot of ground there. We started off by reminding ourselves that acute angles, all of those uh, ratios are positive, sine, cos and tan are all positive. We discovered that for obtuse angles, sine's the only ratio that stays positive and, and cos and tan are considered to be negative. We discovered that the, for every acute angle, it has a related uh, equivalent obtuse angle and for every obtuse angle, it has a related and, and uh, equivalent acute angle. We find those angles that are related to each other by taking any angle away from 180 degrees and we find its related one. We also got some interesting results for sine, cos and tan. They're a reflection of a combination between uh, really this uh, related idea that goes from obtuse to acute and this box up here about obtuse angles that sort of emerged between those two ideas. It helped us uh, solve some uh, results there in those three examples. And we saw a question that had two possible answers. Uh, that involves sine ratios. And uh, when the question hints at it, you know, when it says find the possible values in plural, we'll be looking to uh, perhaps consider a second answer uh, apart from our normal acute answer. So a lot, uh, a lot of trigonometry stuff there that you haven't seen before. Uh, watch the video again if you like, get plenty of practice, and I'll catch you next time for some more uh, harder trigonometry videos that uh, get explained for you. So I hope you enjoyed that, and um, for any of your maths needs, peterblakemaths.com, and uh, we'll see you next time for some more videos. Bye-bye.